ES Audio. Hi, I'm Rochelle Travers, and this is the Evening Standards Tech and Science Daily. Coming up, why WhatsApp might soon stop working on your iPhone. But first... The Ukraine Citrep Room on the Clubhouse app is helping hundreds of thousands of people, including many Russians, access objective information about the war. It was created by Pyotr Kurzan, who himself is the son of a Russian and a Brit. And people, when it first started, people just really needed a place to come and process the news. That's Nina Gregory, head of news at Clubhouse. There's a a woman named Anna, and she herself is from Kiev, and she was on the app as she was fleeing her home, and, you know, people got to know each other. They were concerned for her safety as well as others. The room was set up at the start of the war and had over one million unique users across Ukraine and Russia in its first 50 days. It's like you have a Russian Brit and a Ukrainian um, who who really have been holding down this room. They have other co-moderators to, you know, because they're not like doing this themselves personally 24-7. They bring in guests. They bring in, you know, points of view of individuals. It's just, it's, it's pretty amazing. The room is now understood to be the longest continuously running and largest attended social audio experience in history. WhatsApp will soon stop working for millions of older iPhones, running outdated versions of the iOS operating system. The hugely popular messaging app, which has around 2 billion users worldwide, will no longer be compatible with any device using iOS 10 or iOS 11. This includes any iPhone that came out before 2014, as well as any newer phones that have yet to upgrade to the latest software. Could gene edited tomatoes soon be available in England? We know the vitamin D deficiency is a growing health problem in the UK and worldwide. That's Dr. Jay Lee, plant scientist at the John Innes Centre in Norwich. By using gene editing technology, they were able to create a tomato which contains as much vitamin D as two eggs. We snip out a very small fragment by gene editing and by switching off this enzyme, we were able to accumulate pro-vitamin D3 in tomato plants. The hope is that this could eventually help the estimated 40% of Europeans who have vitamin D insufficiency and the 1 billion people worldwide. But the technology could also have other uses. We really value the prospects of using this technology to tackle the problems about food security, nutrition security, and to feed the growing population, and also to solve the problem we're facing climate change. There's quite lots of promising things we could do with, with that. Next. Two Imperial College London graduates behind an AI-driven system used to increase the value of recycling have been named as finalists for the Young Inventors Prize 2022. Our systems are first a vision system that's able to identify all the individual materials and then with robotics sort it out into their respective uh, material streams. That's Victor DeWolf, CEO of RecycleEye, one of those behind the invention that earned the nomination. He's been telling us how the technology behind it all works. We've partnered with the world's second largest robotic provider. Uh, It's a company called Fanuc. They produce 11,000 robots every single month, essentially building the system. And and for those familiar with robotics, it's a six-axis robot, uh, which gives us a lot more flexibility to grab items from different angles. And it's also a very robust system because hundreds of thousands have already been deployed in the field. In two years, the company has gone from the two founders to a team of 30, who are predominantly engineers. Our ambition is to build a waste management industry where all operational actions are fully automated and where there's also total traceability in the waste removal chains so that we can feed all of that back into our supply chain. The winner of the Young Inventors Prize 2022 will be announced on the 21st of June. Let's go to the ads. Stay there for more news from the world of tech and science. Plus, fancy travelling through time using just your phone? Then keep listening. Welcome back. Facebook boss Mark Zuckerberg is being personally sued over the Cambridge Analytica data breach scandal, as the US District of Columbia is seeking to hold him personally liable. 
The political consultancy was accused in 2018 of illegally harvesting the personal data of potentially 87 million Facebook users. The data was alleged to have been used to manipulate the 2016 US presidential election. It comes as Google, Amazon and Apple have all been targeted in legal actions in recent years. But this is the first lawsuit aimed specifically at a big tech CEO. A study has found that jackdaws use noise to make democratic decisions. Researchers from the University of Exeter claim that jackdaws call to one another to reach a consensus about when to fly off together. They analysed audio and video of six different jackdaw roosts in Cornwall, ranging in size from 160 to almost 1,500 individuals. The team quantified the intensity of the birds' calls leading up to and straight after they took flight. And finally, ever fancy time travelling? Well, it's now possible using just your smartphone. Google Street View's time travel feature is now available on smartphone devices for the first time. Previously, only users on the desktop version of Street View could access any available historical images of a location, for example a landmark or the street they live on, dating back to when Street View launched in 2007. But this feature is now being extended to iOS and Android smartphones. You're up to date. Come back at 4pm for the Leader Podcast from the Evening Standard here in London. We'll be back tomorrow at 1pm. See you then.